Alright guys, this is our final set of video notes for Unit 7 and Cognition. We're going to be looking at language and thought and looking at the various different theories as to how we acquire language, how we process through understanding language, and essentially which one comes first. Is it thought and then our ability to understand language or is there a little bit more to it than just that? So. A definition of language is that it is our spoken, written, or gestured word. Okay, It's the way that we communicate meaning both to ourselves and to other people. So language oftentimes ends up transmitting culture and furthering uh, you know, the norms and the rules and the roles that follow within a particular culture. And we'll move into a little bit more of that when we get to social psychology further on in the year. The structure of language is important to know uh, when it comes to our understanding of cognition. The smallest, most distinctive sound unit in a spoken language is something called a phoneme. Okay, A phoneme is well, just exactly as the definition describes it to be. Okay, We have a large number of phonemes in the English language. For example, where bat is concerned, that word has three phonemes, b, a, t, okay? And, and obviously it's gonna sound really strange when we sound it out that way. Um, but here's the thing though, chat, even though it is four letters, actually still has three phonemes as well because the ch put together gives you the ch sound followed by a, t, for the remainder of the phonemes in that particular word. Now, a morpheme, on the other hand, is the smallest unit that carries meaning. Okay, so it could be a word, but it also could be a part of a word. For example, un or or. Okay, but you could also have words like milk. Um, pumpkin has two morphemes. It has pump and then kin. Unforgettable has four morphemes. Un, for, get, tub, table. Okay, and so uh, these are the smallest units that have meaning. Um, so they could be words, but they could also be parts of words. And if you look at this breakdown of phonemes, morphemes, words, phrases, and sentences, it can give you a little bit of a better understanding. There are about 40 basic phoneme sounds, okay? You can take those and you can use them to establish morphemes words and phrases, okay? Morphemes are, there are about 100,000 morphemes, okay? These are the smallest meaningful units that are out there. And then words are also meaningful units, but they're just not the smallest meaningful units. And they have nearly 300,000 words out there in the English language. A phrase can be composed of two or more words, and you can get upwards of about 326,000 words. Don't ask me who thought it would be interesting to kind of collect all this data and find out how many words and phrases and morphemes and phonemes are out there, but they have. And then where sentences are concerned, there is an infinite number of these because sentences are composed of many words. So this is our discussion of language structure. Now we got to move into grammar and a discussion of that as well because it's significant to an understanding of language. Grammar is a system of rules in a language that enables us to communicate and understand uh, what others say, understand ourselves, and just to have an interaction through language with another person. Grammar has two distinct parts to it. You have semantics. We've heard this word come up before when we were looking at it in memory, uh, and its definition in this sentence where grammar is concerned is pretty similar. And then we have syntax. Now semantic is the set of rules that we have where we derive meaning from morphemes, words, and sentences. So, semantics uh, with regard to rules in the English language, they tell us that adding an ed to the word laugh means, there's that meaning portion to things, that the sentence and that statement is describing something that happened in the past. Okay? So, these are what we're referring to when we look at the issue of semantics. Now, syntax is the rules that we have that combine words into sensible sentences that fall within you know, grammatical uh, appropriations, okay? So what we perceive to be grammatically sensible. So in English syntactical rule, our adjectives come before nouns, okay? So white house, pink bunny, purple elephant, 
okay? But in Spanish and in other Romance languages like French or Italian, it's reversed. The adjective comes after the noun. And so uh, in the case of White House, you would have Casa Blanca. Casa is house, Blanca is white, okay? So a very different kind of syntax and rule for combining words within those two separate kind of languages. Now, language development is also important to discuss when we're looking at the issue of thought and all that's factored into it. In most circumstances, kids learn their native language for the most part before uh, even learning how to do addition, okay? And, and if you think about it like that, it, it, it kind of makes sense. You mean the most basic addition of two plus two. You know, you're, you're being taught words and phrases and you learn things as you observe your parents or your siblings as you get older. On average, we learn after the age of one, 3,500 words a year, 3,500 words. And we'll amass upwards of 60,000 words by the time we graduate high school. So it's a very interesting kind of setup that we have to language develop it. Not only that we're able to learn that many words, but to retain them and to even understand them and to use them in our everyday interactions with others. So we learn language in differing stages. Okay, the first is during the babbling stage. It starts at about four months old when an infant will start to just kind of utter sounds. It's important to note that babbling is not an imitation of adult speech. They're not trying to say what you say to them. It's just kind of sounds that they're getting out there, but we kind of like to perceive it as talking. Okay, um, until about nine or ten months, interestingly enough, you can't differentiate the native language of a baby and what how what kind of house they grew up in. So if you have, uh, you know, if you grew up in Romania and in the United States, up until about nine or ten months, researchers wouldn't be able to tell which country you developed in um, or what language you learned first because there's no way to differentiate between native language up until that point in time of a baby's development. Now, we get to the one word stage right around a first birthday. This is when they can start to say mama or dada, something very simple, okay? They start to speak in one word, um, and so this is an attempt to enable family members to understand them. So, um, you know, you could say something like bottle, then a parent would know, okay, you want to be able to eat. Um, or if they're pointing to the, the dog and they say doggy, you would know that that's what they're looking at or if they're looking for a toy, okay? Um, so it's enabling them to communicate with the parent and for the adult to be able to understand what they're, what they're trying to say or try to get at. It usually is going to start with short words, as I said, and um, begin with consonants, particularly the letters B, D, M, P, or T. Again, I don't know who was able to, you know, become interested enough to want to do this research, but they did, and these were their findings. Um, interestingly enough, for example, for my uh, little brother, who was the slowest in language development because he was younger, and so he had a lot of family members that were, you know, they would just do a lot of talking for him, so he didn't end up developing a lot of speech until, um, you know, probably three or four uh, his first word was the name of our dog at that point in time, which, which was Buster, um, but he couldn't pronounce the S uh, and the T together, so he ended up calling him Bupper, uh, and so that was his first word. Kids are capable of understanding a large amount of language, even if they can't necessarily express the language itself, okay? They're capable of understanding a large amount that they hear even before this stage. So they can understand what you're saying to them even if they can't say something back to you um, that is something you could understand. Now the two word stage happens before you get to year number two in terms of birthdays. And this is when the child starts to speak in two word sentences, okay? It's a form of speech called telegraphic speech where the kid basically starts to talk like you would see in a telegram. Um, go car, for example, could mean I want to go for a car ride. Um, or, you know, um, want food. Obviously, it's going to be pretty, pretty straightforward to be able to understand what they're looking for. So this is why two, the two-word stage is also referred to as telegraphic speech. So longer phrases are going to start um, 
at right around elementary school age, okay? So when you get into the areas of preschool and kindergarten and first grade. Um, after telegraphic speech happens, kids will start to, you know, be able to put together longer phrases that have some level of syntactical sense to them based on the native language that they're speaking.